whether you've never run a game of D&D or it's just been a really long time, in this video I want to encourage you to run your own tabletop role-playing game. So right now my friends and I are playing every other week over Discord and I guess I should explain what I mean by playing. So my three friends have created their own characters. That's who I'm drawing right now, by the way. There's Pong, Puggy, and Gator. And I basically play everybody else. And together we're creating a story. So playing a tabletop role-playing game is actually pretty simple. As a dungeon master, I set up the scene, just explain what stuff looks and sounds like, who the people around are, that sort of thing. And then I just ask the players what they want to do. And a lot of times they ask questions and I answer them, or sometimes they actually want to take action. And that's when you start rolling dice to see what happens. And seeing how they interact with the world that I'm dropping down in front of them is an amazing feeling. And since it's been a little while, I've forgotten how rewarding running a game of D&D can be. But actually, we're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. We're playing a game called Five Torches Deep. I'll leave a link to where you can check it out down in the description. It's a really cool old school Renaissance OSR feeling game with some 5e -E stuff laid on top of it. I'll probably do some sort of review recap kind of video eventually once I've played it a little bit more. But my point for bringing up Five Torches Deep is, well actually I have two points. So one is there are lots of different games besides Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're not really into playing a fantasy role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons, there are tons of other settings and game types for all kinds of different games. And there's also different kinds of rules for all of those different settings. And now that I'm mentioning that there's all types of games for all different types of settings and stuff, uh, I guess that can be a little intimidating. But really, if you just ask around, do a little bit of Googling, or even leave a comment on this video, there's lots of people that are extremely willing to tell you all about their favorite game for their favorite setting. So when I was looking for a new game to run, I wanted something with as few rules for me as possible, but also had enough of a framework for my players so they could make choices and level up their characters and uh, feel unique and fun at the same time. And that kind of brings me to my second point, which I know is a huge barrier of entry to running your first role-playing game, and that is learning the rules. Like I just said, I hate rules. I hate learning rules. <laughs> but if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> so obviously a great way of learning the rules is to read the rule book. And with a lot of these lighter rule RPGs, that is totally an easy thing to do. Read through it a couple of times. They're never very long. So it doesn't take up a bunch of times. But for a game like Dungeons and Dragons, you don't want to read through that entire rule book. It's like 300 pages long. And by the time you get to the end of it, you've already forgotten 90% of what you read because there's so many stinking rules. But the main way I learned how to play Dungeons and Dragons, at least, was by listening to podcasts and watching actual play shows. Just watching and listening is super entertaining, but you will be really surprised at just how fast you pick up the basic rules. When I say basic rules, I mean like the baseline rules, what you really need to know to run a game. But yeah, don't worry about knowing every little thing. When I started running this game, I definitely did not know all of the rules in Five Torches Deep. And you know, you just pause, look through the rule book or ask one of the other players if they know the rule and make a decision, move on. It's really not a big deal. So I am using this game to play test my Patreon adventures. So every month I release a new adventure on Patreon, and this game has been helping me make those adventures even better. And because I think about this stuff way too much, having a new game where I can selfishly play out some of my ideas, stuff like, what does it look like to run a point crawl through a dangerous mountain range? Or how do I create a completely randomized dungeon filled with kobolds? Or this month's adventure, 
how do I throw the players against a cult of bat people that worship darkness, but also have the adventure be super funny and whimsical. You know, my favorite part of running a tabletop role-playing game is getting to exercise that creative part of my brain. And the fun of it is, you know, bouncing that creative stuff off of my friends and seeing how they react to it. But that does kind of lead me to the next barrier of entry for new dungeon masters and it was definitely a barrier for me and that is worrying about what kind of story you're gonna tell as a dungeon master now my advice as someone who's been doing this for a little bit is not to worry too much because really you don't have to have that much work done ahead of time to run a fun game there's lots of videos out there all about getting started creating your own campaign but i also recommend running pre-written stuff so as i've mentioned on this channel probably a thousand times I absolutely love the D&D starter set, and now they have the essentials kit that you can add on top of it, but the adventure in the starter set, The Lost Minds of Fandelver, is a fantastic entryway into a fantasy role-playing game. It's organized pretty well. It's fairly inexpensive. It has everything you need to get started. It's definitely my go-to recommendation, but also it was a big inspiration for my Dragon Town zine, which is basically a version of my ideal starter adventure. So maybe that's something you want to check out too. Any pre-written adventure, you know, they're just fun to read and really they're just there so you don't have to create stuff out of thin air. All you're doing when you're preparing from a pre-written adventure is just reading about the setting so you know how to describe the location and then reading about who inhabits this world so you can figure out how you want to play all of the non-player characters and monsters and creatures and stuff. And that brings me to the next point, which is being intimidated about acting and leading a group through this adventure. And this one I really, really understand because I always get nervous right before I'm about to start running a game, even when I do a ton of preparation. But really, I just have to remind myself that everybody's here to have fun. Now, I do want to say that while watching really well done shows like Critical Role or one of my favorites, The Dungeon Run, you know, that can be super helpful in learning how to play the game, learning how to be a dungeon master and all that. Those shows do kind of distort the reality of sitting down and playing a tabletop role-playing game with your friends because they're being played by these super charismatic actors that are doing voices and, and acting out these crazy epic storylines and stuff. And I know for me at least, I'm just doing my best to keep the little bit of rules I know in my head, string along a coherent sequence of events and, and you know, make sure my friends are having fun, that once I start adding voices and trying to act and stuff, it's just like one step too much for me. Maybe I'll get there in the future, but right now I can't handle the voices. I think they're super cool and sometimes in the shower I practice them a little bit, but they never come out when I'm actually playing the game. And really, I don't think they're that important. So, you know, if you're watching a D&D &D show online with a bunch of actors and stuff, it makes it more entertaining. But when you're playing with your friends, I, I really don't think it's that important. So for example, in this last game I just played, there were three major NPCs that the players interacted with. One was this giant mosquito that was like kind of high on blood. Another one was this super terrified, insecure little weevil character that has actually now joined the party. And another one was this uh, very intimidating but also flamboyant king of insects. And as you can imagine, those three characters probably have very different sounding voices, but I didn't do any of that, and I still think my players had a ton of fun interacting with those characters. What makes the game memorable and fun for your players is seeing how the characters that you're running as the dungeon master react to all the crazy stuff that their characters, the player characters, 
are doing. Okay, the key to running your very first tabletop role-playing game has nothing to do with having an epic story all planned out or knowing all the rules and doing a bunch of voice acting or putting on some huge production. It's just about you taking the initiative to schedule some time with your friends whether it's in person or on Discord or Zoom, and just having fun playing a game together and creating some memorable memories. And don't worry, it's not gonna be perfect, but your friends are gonna be psyched that you spent the time to set this whole thing up. And once you start playing, you're not gonna wanna stop. And every time you play, you get a little bit better, a little bit more confident. And before you know it, you're gonna be the world's greatest dungeon master. So I really hope you give running your own tabletop role-playing game a shot. Hit me up on social media or leave a comment. I would love to hear how it goes when you play your first game. Also, I've got tons of videos about how to improve your game once you get it started. So be sure to subscribe. And if you want to check out some fun monthly adventures, be sure to take a look at the Patreon linked down in the description. That's it for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!